We are now. Yeah. Oh my God, it's you again. Fell with a friend. I haven't seen your face around here for quite some. Day by Day with Rob and Jody. I'm Rob. And I'm Jody. We're excited to welcome you today to another show here on Hope Radio 247.com. Turn down the music, Jody. <laughs> <laughs> you, you I can too. hear Sean saying it. Turn down the music. You got the portable devices going? Yeah, right? I did. Okay. Sorry about that. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, we'd like to say hello to our Facebook viewers out there. Hey, guys. How are you? And as always, say hello to my beautiful wife, Jody. How are you doing today? I'm wonderful, baby. How are you? I'm wonderful. And, and, I am and, blessed and highly favored. And and I know it seems silly that we I, I say hi to my wife every week here on the show because, we, as you know, we probably rode here together. So why am I saying hi to her? But, you know, I uh, make a point to say hi and acknowledge her beauty every chance I get it. So... Oh, my. Welcome, beautiful. Ladies, you want one like this one. He's taken, but you want one like him. <laughs> well, we want to take a moment and uh, thank Hope Radio 24-7 and Hope Recovery Center for helping us to help you find hope in Jesus Christ day by day and remind you that if you have a, a hurt, a habit, or an addiction, uh, Hope, Radio, Hope Recovery Center can help you out with that. And uh, you can uh, get a hold of them at uh, www.hoperecoverycenterinc.com. Dot org, and uh, reach out to them, and there's plenty of people that can help you with the different things. We also want to point out that uh, if you get a hold of Hope Recovery now, they're looking for volunteers, and internship positions are available. So call Hope Recovery Center and learn how you can make a difference in the community and help those struggling with hurts, habits, and addictions, and find hope with our Savior Jesus Christ. So you can reach out to them uh, again at Hope Recovery Center Inc. Org. And I have worked with a lot of recovery centers, sober living homes, homeless shelters, and they've got a fantastic program here. So if you need help, your friends need help, especially through the holidays, and guess what we're talking about today? Well, let me, let me finish up with Hope Recovery Center. I know, but it goes right with what we're talking about. Well, that's true. But it really ahead. does. It really, really, really does. <laughs> I'm just, you know, anyway. <laughs> I couldn't resist. I just wanted to point out, too. Uh, in addition to the website, you can call Hope Recovery Center at 951-603-0031 and tell them Rob and Jody sent you, and they will take care of you. Now, now, now? Now. Now I can say it. What are we talking about today? We're going to talk about the holidays. The holidays. Hey. No, really. We're going to talk about how to conquer holiday depression. How to conquer holiday depression. And do it through Jesus Christ. Is depression a big problem in the holidays? Oh, just a wee bit. Maybe we should ask the expert. Hang on a second. Hey, Sean. Yes. Hey. Yeah, we'll bring Sean hey. Kelly from we'll Hope Recovery Center in. into the conversation. Yeah. I'm... Thank you for stopping by, Sean. Oh, you're welcome. I'm very just nice in the neighborhood. Of you to, to do that, you know, <laughs> you were in the neighborhood. Sean takes care of us here all the time, and he's the actual 
president, founder of Hope Recovery. Mm. So with, who else to talk to about depression? And then we'll just go right to the horse's mouth here. There you go. So, so tell us about what happens during the holidays. You know, unfortunately, we do see a lot, a lot more people. The phones ring a lot more. You know, the holidays are hard, hard for a lot of people. You know, it's a, even I struggle a little bit during the holidays. You know, it, Thanksgiving, coming up on my 11th year of my heart attacks. Mm. And um, not that I'm celebrating the heart attacks, but my gosh, sometimes it's just really hard. Mm -hmm. But um, I'm so grateful, so grateful that, um, you know, God has chose to, you know, leave me here. <laughs> yeah. And and has worked for me in purpose. You still have an assignment. Absolutely. That's why. Absolutely. And I really believe hope recovery is your assignment. It's a big one. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Sean, when when somebody identifies today that they're struggling with depression or at any time and they come to Hope Recovery, what can Hope Recovery do for them? Well, you know, um, there's three things. There's three things that I wrote down on my whiteboard a long time ago. Number one is um, we listen to them. Number mm -hmm. two, we love on them. And number three, we, you know, we make them feel part of something, and that's a family. Mm -hmm. And on top of all that, you know, let me just introduce you to Jesus. Oh, and, yeah. And see what he does in your life. And, um, you know, everyone's relationship with Jesus is so different, but that's what's so awesome about it, about him. Mm -hmm. You know, and there's a lot of times we do get to introduce him to Jesus and watch that relationship grow. Cool. That is cool. Yeah. So, that is cool. Um, along with Hope. Radio 24-7 being a faith-based group, Hope Recovery is obviously a faith-based uh, recovery program. Absolutely. But anybody can come. But any, anybody's welcome. Yep, uh, yeah, come as you are. Yeah. Come as you are. I, I, I love that saying, come as you are. Um, yeah, but you know the best part? It's free. It's free. Huh? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Tell us about how come it's free. Well, you know, it, it stems from the experience um, that I've seen, you know, and the experience that that's out there. And to be honest with you, people who are broken don't have any money. That's true. They don't. And, you know, in the Bible it says if the ones that are, are blessed help out the ones unfortunate, mm -hmm. then in return when those who are unfortunate are blessed, then they'll help out. And that's mm -hmm. the way the world should be. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's wonderful. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. But that okay. doesn't say if you got all this money and money is not working for you. It's not you. Don't, you're not supposed to be in love with money. Yeah. The Bible says, "Do not be in love with money." It, you know, it's the root of all evil. Is not you know. It is the money itself is not the problem. It's what happens with the money that creates the problem. It's the, it's the hunger you and can the lust you can buy drugs or you can buy groceries. <laughs> you know, take your pick. So. Absolutely. In true, life, true. so you got to figure out what's going on in your life and and really pinpoint. What's the what's important, Sean? I know we caught you kind of off guard today, but um, no, it's okay. Is, is is there any statistic that you know off the top of your head? Uh, you know, talking about what kind of numbers we're talking about when we talk about depression. Uh, you know, depression. It's it's there's there's a couple scary ones out there. You know, um, mental health, mm -hmm. um, depression. That has actually in the gosh. In the suicide rate, oh yeah, that has actually surpassed the number of people who die in car accidents. Mm -hmm. Actually, die from mm -hmm. mental health issues, suicides, and I was just like, you know, when I when I first read that, it was about a year ago, and I was like, why isn't this on every single news, you know, across the state that right. more people are dying from mental health issues than people in car accidents? Mm -hmm. Not saying that people should die in car accidents, but it's just it blew my mind. It mm -hmm. it really did. That's why we felt really a calling um, this week to go ahead and, and tackle a tough subject, and that is talking about, uh, you know, we call it holiday depression or just depression in, in, as a whole. It just makes you go, there is a way out of it. You don't have to do it alone. Right. And if, you're, if you come to Hope Recovery, there's people here to love on you and help you and guide you and show you in the Bible, as we're going to do today, about how God's for you. He's not against you. Mm -hmm. He wants to help you. He wants to love on you. And when you really think about it, he gave up his only begotten son for you. That he loves you that much. 
Now, I don't know if I'd give up my only begotten child to do that, but boy, howdy. <laughs> that that would take some awful big love, and I'm not sure I got that much in my heart for a total stranger. But I got some. It's there. <laughs> but God's got more. That's right. He certainly does. He certainly does. So we're going to talk. Uh, be talking a little bit now about... Uh, Stay ready, Sean. We're going to come back at you. I'm here. Okay. What the uh, Bible does talk about uh, depression and, you know making that distinction between depression and holiday depression. Yes, depression is something that happens year round, mm -hmm. but it, it certainly escalates at the holiday times. It does and because you've got family <clears throat> coming over you haven't seen in probably a year. You've got to buy all these gifts. You've got to budget your money. And if you haven't budget your, budgeted your money, then you're really into a like, oh my gosh, where am I getting all this money from? I've got 10 people to buy for. You got 25 bucks a pop, you know, you got to do the math. Well, and, and it goes even beyond that because you said you got all this family that you haven't seen in a while. Yes, and but the drama. Sometimes you've got that family that you're not going to see in, uh -huh. in this life. And then life. you're alone. And, you're, and maybe you're alone, and maybe you're not alone. Maybe you have others around you, but you're still missing someone so badly that you, you get into that depressed state. Uh, yeah, I mean, somebody may have passed away recently or it may have been 10 years ago. Right. Right, and the holidays are when we tend to think about those exactly. people, regardless of how, how long ago they went to be home with the Lord. Uh, that's when we tend to think about them. Mm -hmm. So let us know if you got any questions or you want to you know, give us some comments on uh, the Facebook Live app that we got going on right now. That'd be great. I don't that's know. Day by Day with Rob and Jody Sorry, on Facebook Dave. or at Hope Radio 24-7 yes. radio show. Either one of those, you can catch us on Facebook Live. Mm -hmm. And we'll and, do the best to answer them any way we can. And we want to say hello to Julie, who's watching, and uh, Annette, who's watching. And they've hey, guys. On Facebook, so good afternoon. So, anyhow, let, let's start this thing out here and um, see where we go here. Um, Hang on. I wanted to go through oh. a few things if we can. Okay. I had a, a, a quick thought is that some people may not really know what, how to go ahead and either do a stress management or what's the triggers or what may set you off into like a tailspin during the holidays mm -hmm. to where you need to go ahead and say, I need help. What do I do? That's when you call Hope Recovery because sometimes your pastor's busy. If you're friends of ours, you got our numbers, call us. That's okay too. You know, well, we'd be glad to go ahead and talk to you at, you know, some of you got our cell numbers, so you're welcome to call anytime. Just not between five and six on Monday. <laughs> We're kind of busy, but we love you. But there's some things here that I wanted to go over real quick. Is that there's, um, and this is put up by the Mayo Clinic about uh, depression and the holidays tips for to um, coping. And basically, they're saying here. And I'm sure, Sean, if I say anything that's incorrect, you stop me, okay? Okay. Oh, okay, here we go. Basically, it's just saying that you need to acknowledge your feelings and really go with it and just say, I am going to be okay. It's okay to cry. It's okay to feel sad, but I need to come out of it. I don't need to stay there. You got to come out of it. So if you're going to have a good cry, I know I've had a good cry even recently, about missing my mom, who went to heaven in 2002. And it was just like, and I, even when my dad passed away, I didn't cry for three years. And then, boy, howdy, did I cry. You know, so, I mean, it, it comes at people in different ways, different stages. But then it's also a, a time to reach out, to ask for help. Again, hope recovery any kind of uh, your church or religious organization that might be able to help you, that would be great. And then there's, uh, let's see here. And I should point out when you say reach out, reach out not only for help, but reach out to volunteer. Yes. Because w the, one of the best things you can do is, is volunteering mm -hmm. to help others who might be in situations. So if you have an opportunity, you know, to go help at a, a food kitchen or, mm -hmm. you know, you have an opportunity to help some organization that's helping out needy families or whatever. When you help others, that helps your oh, situation. Oh, man, your endorphins go right out the roof. It's an that's incredible That's a great feeling. thing. Yeah. So reaching out, a couple things to that. 
Yeah, I know they're doing a big feeding on at Lord's Kitchen in L.A. on Skid Row. So if anybody needs to needs to volunteer, run on over. Boy, if that's an outreach to go see once in your life. Yeah, no kidding. You've got to go to see it. You've got to get involved. Because yeah. we used to always have people at the homeless shelter. Different churches would actually compete to get on Thanksgiving Day to go over there and, and be a part of it. Yeah. So, the good old days. <laughs> anyway, then you also need to be realistic about... You're not that, and this is just, for, you know, it'd be like me, for I've set a goal where I'm going to get all my shopping done and I'm going to do it all in one day. Wrong. I can't be a perfect person and try to get it all done in one day. Now, there is the people that I'll do their shopping on the 24th. God bless you. I'm celebrating Jesus' birthday on the 24th. I'm not doing my shopping. Mm-hmm. But, hey, if that's where your paycheck comes in, that's when you can do it. And if the sales are happening... Knock yourself out, but you need to be realistic on what's going on and setting the realistic goals. Let's see here. Then you need to be a set a budget. Aha, I'll say it again. You got to set a budget mm-hmm. about being realistic on your money. And if you, I mean, seriously, do something homemade gifts, write people letters. I'm one at my age that I would appreciate a letter telling me that, you know, you love me and something I could keep forever. Then I would, you know, opening up something and going, great, a sweater. All right. I just saved a whole bunch of money. Yeah, you did. You know, (laughs) seriously, I'd rather have a heartfelt letter. You know, from a family member, and you, I know you're listening, to go ahead and, you know, then a sweater or, now if it's a sweatshirt that says Navy on it, I'll take that, oh, Dallas, no problem. <laughs> Dallas, go for it, buddy, he's in the Navy. Woohoo! proud of you. But, you know, if there's ever a time where you just go, wow, you know, I need to set a realistic goal, it is in your money. It's in, it's in, it's time to budget. And uh, stick to it. And, and, and. You know, interestingly enough, uh, money is probably one of the biggest factors that contributes to uh, a lot of problems in marriages and a lot of problems with depression is people stressing over money. And if the money doesn't, if you don't have it in December, you're not going to have it in January to pay your credit card bill. So just tossing out something on some some thought on that one. Mm -hmm. Don't rack up your credit card trying to buy the perfect gift, quote unquote. So what else we got there, honey? Well, we talk about planning ahead. You know, planning is is something that you want to implement in every area of your life. When you have a a plan and you're doing things according to your plan and everything going according to your plan, Mm -hmm. that's going to be the least stressful uh, situation than just randomly jumping around trying to get things done. Yeah, but what happens when Aunt Sally comes over and she is just critiquing that you have made the stuffing the wrong way? What do you do? Aunt Sally gets her own plate, and she gets to go eat on the back porch. Um, (laughs) So help me, Lloyd. I don't know where that came from. (laughs) Okay, Aunt Sally. Wow. Back porch with the dog. Okay. Well, honey, you might be having a good time with Aunt Sally. (laughs) Good thing we don't have an Aunt Sally. Life will always throw a curveball at you. and um, Part of the planning, though, hopefully eliminates a lot of the stress so that when that curveball does come at you, you're going to be better equipped to deal with it, mm-hmm. you know. Um, mm-hmm. And, of course, you know, take it to the Lord, as we'll talk about later in the show. But yep. How about just a couple more of these? Okay. Uh, learn how to say no. Amen. You know, we, we tend to want to please everybody, and, and especially at the holidays, you know, we don't want to disappoint somebody and, and so forth, so we tend to say yes to everything. And, and especially if you got kids in school. Yeah. Try, you can't say yes to being the room mom and the person doing the choir robes and doing the little manger scene outfits. And, you know, you, you need to learn how to say no and, or delegate. It's right. either one of the two. Either say no or delegate. Yeah. You, know, you, really. you got to learn not to, that you can't participate in every project and every activity. And you may want to, and God bless you, but you're going to have to learn how to delegate or say no. It's just not going to happen. Ask me. I gave up the superwoman cape a long time ago. This, this is one that I think that we all uh, tend to not do very well at, myself highly included. Don't abandon healthy habits. Mm-hmm. And I would say that uh, as we come up on Thanksgiving, that particularly 
you know, we all know we need to eat eat better and exercise and, you know, not have too much pumpkin pie and not eat too much stuffing. And I love stuffing. Not have three or four helpings of mashed potatoes. And, you know, not that I know anybody that would do any no, of those No, no, not but, at all. Not um, at all. I just, you know, we gotta, we gotta we make sure the that jumbo we're, size plates, guys. Yeah, yeah, we gotta make sure we're not uh, overindulging, and uh, and uh, you know, make sure that we keep up with our, our, uh, you know, if we have fitness programs that we're jumbo size plate, jumbo size plates. Yes, we got, if if we're, you know, in a fitness program, we want to make sure we keep that going because uh, that's going to be the worst time of the year to fall behind on that. Yeah, if you got a gym membership, or even if you don't, do sit ups in your living room. Get those endorphins flying around because that's what's going to help you get through the holidays. Yeah, yeah, and then All I right. like this one. Take a breather. Take a breather. Make some time for yourself. You know, often with with uh, depression hits because we're just we're going, 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 and all of a sudden we realize, oh my gosh, I just can't handle it, and we have that meltdown. Uh, oftentimes that's what leads to, uh, to the depression. So we want to make sure that we're taking time for ourselves, to, time to recharge our batteries, as they say, time to be with the Lord, make sure we're, we're doing our prayers and, and, and reading in the Bible and, and so forth like that so that we keep getting fed with the good yeah, stuff. Yeah, the need. Word does say to pray nonstop, pray without ceasing. Yeah. And that could be while you're working out, or that could be while you're preparing the turkey, or that could be while you're wrapping gifts, or whatever it might be. And then, and then the final one I want to point out before we jump into scriptures and stuff: sure. is seek professional help if you need it. Despite, Hope recovery. <laughs> despite your best efforts, you may not be able to keep control of it. But if you get to the point where you're feeling persistently sad or anxious, or you're just plagued by physical physical ailments, you're unable to sleep, irritable, hopeless. Uh, unable to face routine chores, this is when you need to seek professional help. Mm-hmm. And, and that may be Hope Recovery Center. Uh, in some cases, it may be your doctor, if, if yeah. that's what's necessary. But get help. Don't right. don't allow that to continue on. Hey, Sean, you got anything to add? No, I think you guys covered it pretty good. Mm-hmm. I liked all that. Okay. I, I think um, you know people people tend to start to get into that de- mode of depression. And they say, oh, I can handle it. Oh, it's, you know, I can take care of this myself. And they don't seek help. You know, what, what would you say to that person that just thinks they don't need it? I've been there. Yeah. <laughs> I've, I've done the same thing. You know, one thing you were saying about um, sometimes life just is so busy that we get, you know, really stressed out. And sometimes, sometimes people take way too many breaks by themselves. So it's that fine line, you know, mm-hmm. also. You know, because I'm I'm one to where I I have that flight, flight or flight or fight or flight. Oh, fight yes. or flight. Yeah. You know, I'm like I just want to take off and I just want to be by myself, and that's not necessarily what I should be doing. Right, mm-hmm. right. Yeah, I tend to I tend to be one who kind of closes up. Yeah. And I won't even talk with Jody, mm-hmm. and, and, yeah. and she has to dig dig it out of me. What's going on? You know. And I know when something's going on. Yeah, I mean, it's just that's not how we want to be. We, no. we want to reach out for help. The sooner we we deal with it the, the sooner things are going to be okay and Absolutely. we can move on so mm-hmm. and speaking of moving on let's move on now with some some biblical context to all of this and uh, see yes. if we can't give you some give you some hope some give you some hope give you some things that you can read that you can study that you can really uh hopefully get into your heart and into your mind to realize that there is hope there is something i can do mm-hmm. there is a way out of this so which so where should we start Oh, how about uh, Psalm 16? That just happens to be the first one on my list. There you go. All right. We're going to do this out of out of the uh, contemporary English version of the Bible. Um, as, as those of you that listen to our show regularly, we know we like to kind of d- jump around different versions and uh, maybe introduce you to something you're not used to reading, give you a little different perspective. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a couple of our vers- verses today out of contemporary English version, CEV. Uh, we just like the way they read, so I share those with you. So Psalm 16, protect me, Lord God, I run to you for safety, and I have said, only you are my Lord. Every good thing I have is a gift from you. Your people are wonderful, and they make me happy, but worshipers of other gods will have much sorrow. I refuse to offer sacrifices of blood to those gods or worship in their name. You, Lord, are all I want. You are my choice, and you keep me safe. You make my life pleasant, and my future is bright. I praise you, Lord, 
for being my guide. Even in the darkest night, your teachings fill my mind. I will always look to you as you stand beside me and protect me from fear. With all my heart, I will celebrate, and I can safely rest. I am your chosen one. You won't leave me in the grave or let my body decay. You have shown me the path to life, and you make me glad by being near to me. Sitting at your right side, I will always be joyful. Mm-hmm. I love it right off the bat where it's... Per- <clears throat> and as the person is recognizing, basically, I believe it's either Moses or David. Take your pick. I believe it's David because David had a, had a real problem... And a real several bouts of depression, and you can read it in the Psalms because sometimes the Psalms are very um, cheerful and praising, and sometimes they're very down and blue. Mm-hmm. So, and yes, the blues. I know we all fight the blues, and they call postpartum just the baby blues, but the holiday blues set in, and we don't want to say depressed. We don't want to say that's the bad word, depression. It's not. Not when, if you cry out and you need help and you come over here to Hope Recovery, it's a loving time in your life to go ahead and realize that people love you and will take care of you and watch and help you grow, and it's help you especially help you grow in the Lord. But anyway, I just want to point out here where it says, "Protect me, protect me, Lord God. I run to you for safety." That is wisdom. That's just wisdom to know that you need to run towards God. Don't run away from him. He's not the one that wants you to run. The devil wants you to run away from God. God wants to openly embrace you and love you and hug you and say, Baby, it's going to be okay. Come to me. Tell me everything you ever want to know. I know when I want to vent or I'm just totally just at my wits end and Rob's not around I go hey God we need to talk and I'll just go blah, 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 and just blather off whatever it is that's going on and I'll cry I'll get upset I'll just say hey God, Lord this isn't working for me we need to work this out mm-hmm. I'm human too Rob's human we have feelings Sean's human we have we, we've been through stuff Sean's been through stuff but, you know, when it comes to it, we have to have the wisdom to go ahead and say, yes, I will run to God and get help. Right. You know, and that's interesting, running to God, because I, the people that I've come across in life that have suffered with depression, uh, they tend to want to run from God yes. at that point. That tends to be a point. There's almost a, 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 a feeling of inadequacy and a mm-hmm. feeling of lack of worth when you get depressed and or, you feel shame. Like you, or shame and you feel like you, you don't deserve God's love so you tend to withdraw from him mm-hmm. and and as this says here that's not what we want to be doing uh, we definitely want to be running to God he's mm-hmm. our safety he protects us mm-hmm. you know and as it says in here too he says you make my life pr- pleasant and my future is bright I praise you Lord for being my guide so you need to look to the Lord as your guide Yes. And praise him, and and he will make your life pleasant, 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 pleasant. He will pleasantly make your life pleasant. There you go, and uh, your future is bright with him. And even in the darkest nights, your teachings fill my mind. Mm-hmm. So even in the depths of your depression, God can be there to help you. Or literally at the darkest of night, at midnight, two a.m., and you're just at your wit's end, and you're like, yeah. I don't know what to do, and there is nobody to call. Right. Is just like, what do I do? Mm-hmm. You talk to God. You talk to Jesus Christ. You just say, I don't know what to do. Help me. Mm-hmm. And then get quiet. And you'll get a quiet, still voice will talk to you. And you're going to go, what is going on? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then you'll hear it again. And it'll be probably the same thing repeated two or three times. And you go, okay, I get it. Right. That's what I'm supposed to do. But you got to get quiet enough to let God talk to you. Yeah. And sometimes that's at 2 o'clock in the morning. Yeah. 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 All right. Let's look at Psalm 43. This is also in the contemporary English version. It says, Show that I am right, God. Defend me against everyone who doesn't know you. 
Rescue me from each of these deceitful liars. I run to you for protection. Why have you turned me away? Why must enemies mistreat me and make me sad? Send your light and your truth to guide me. Let them lead me to your house on your sacred mountain. Then I will worship at your altar because you make me joyful. You are my God, and I will praise you. Yes, I will praise you as I play my harp. Why am I discouraged? Why am I restless? I trust you, and I will praise you again because you help me, and you are my God. Mm-hmm. Now, this is David. Can you tell by the writing? Mm-hmm. He's up and down. But what's interesting here is you know, he goes, God, defend me. <laughs> And she's like, that'll make you stop and think. Yeah. Because at the time, he's he's in a, he's in a, um, usually David was some, fighting some battle. So here, you know, he's like, defend me against everyone who doesn't know me. Okay, people, be real. If, you, if you're talking to people at work or they don't know you and they're bad-mouthing you, wouldn't you say the same thing? Would, would that might get you in a little, you know, think about a little holiday depression going on here with your family well they just don't know me mm-hmm. but wouldn't you want to say god help me defend me i'm here what do you you need to help me here and i think it's important too that we we, we point out defend me what is what are we defending from we're, we're having a battle of spiritual warfare yep that's, that's what depression what it is, is. The, the depression is spiritual warfare so mm-hmm. you need to put your armor on you need to be prayed up you need to be ready to face what the devil is going to bring and you And putting your armor on is in Ephesians chapter 6, yep. start at verse 10, and go all the way down. You'll start seeing all the armaments. Yep. And it is like we are seriously in a spiritual battle. And that's, Rob mm-hmm. is absolutely right. It, we are, it, it, depression is a spiritual force. that we And we need to nip it in the behind in Jesus' name. Well, hey, guess what? We are up against a commercial break. So okay. We're going to run the break here, and we'll be back uh, in just a moment or so with more from Day by Day with Rob and Jody. You have been listening to Hope Radio 247.com. Hey, everyone. This is Sean Kelly from the Hours of Hope Radio Show, and I'm just here to tell you about something near and dear to my heart and one of the main reasons why we have Hope Radio 247.com. Hope Recovery Center is a faith-based outpatient recovery center who helps people with any hurt, habit, or addiction. The services we provide here are free of charge and available to anyone. We found the vast majority of people, they don't need a professional psychiatrist. What they really need is someone to listen to them, someone to love them, and to be part of something, a family in particular. For more information, call 951-603-0031. Again, the number is 951-603-0031. Or visit our website at www.hoperecoverycenterinc.org. As I always say, Godspeed, my friends. Hey, this is Ramon with Epic Thoughts on Hope Radio 24-7. Did you miss your favorite show this week? Not a problem. Did you know you could download the app? Go to your Google Play Store or your Windows Store and download Hope Radio 24-7. On that app, you have all your favorite shows. So whether it's the Eddie Foy Show, the Hours of Hope Radio, God I Love Sports, or your favorite show, Epic Thoughts. And you can listen to every show all the time on the go on the Hope Radio 24-7 app. There's also bulletins that let you know what's going on over here at the radio station and at Hope Recovery Center. Opportunities for you to give and even prayer requests. If you need somebody to pray for you, we are there for you. So we just want to thank you for your opportunity for letting us bless you with our radio station. Download the app, Hope Radio 24-7. Thanks for listening, and you have a blessed day. Corderama, Corderama, Corderama is coming December 8th. Mark your calendars. Our world-famous Corderama fundraiser for Hope Recovery Center is December 8th from 6 to 9 p.m. Right here in Corona, we are going to have it at Corona Friends Church, 1220 West Ontario Avenue. That's right, December 8th, Corderama fundraiser for Hope Recovery Center, 
Why? Because everything we do at Hope is no charge. It's for free. So in order to keep these doors open, we have to have these amazing fundraisers. And this one is awesome, you guys. Bring your kids. Bring your mom. Bring your dad. Come out. Win some prizes. Have dinner on us. And just enjoy the evening. Godspeed, my friends. And we will see you December 8th. Welcome back to Day by Day with Rob and Jody. I'm Rob. And I'm Jody, and, and we're we back. Back here again to uh, continue talking about conquering holiday depression. And uh, kind of a, uh, probably something most people don't want to think about. And most people think, oh, I'm strong. I can get through it. Oh, I, I, don't, I don't need any help with that. Well, I, I got to say something to some folks that I, I used to be one for 17 years. And that's to all my single ladies, all my single friends, single sisters. Hey. Isn't that a, isn't that a song? All the single ladies. Oh. That's I wish I had that queued up right now. Did you wish you had that? You I, know what song I I'm thinking of. It. <laughs> <laughs> to all the single ladies. Yes. That, is that Beyonce? <laughs> I think so, yes. I think so, too. <laughs> it, a cool song, but hey. <laughs> no, I just want, I wanted to say something because as a uh, single person for so long in between 10 years of marriage and now almost 10 years of marriage with Rob I was divorced for 10 years except sorry 17 years and the holidays for me was really tough because everybody had their husbands and the one thing that always got me I would sit in church and I'd always watch some man boyfriend husband whatever go ahead and put their arm around their wife or their spouse or their uh, girlfriend and it would just crush me and I just didn't know what to do and I just I just sit in my car after going great word and I don't remember what the pastor says but boy I remember what I felt when this guy in front of me put his arm around the lady I just felt like I was worthless didn't have anything to say who cares about if I'm a dead or alive? No worries. And I got a kid. At this time, I got a teenager who I loved very much, who I was supporting. I was um, taking care of my mom, who I love who I love very much, but has gone to heaven now. But it's just like, you know what? There, I didn't feel it personally for me. There was you know, nobody for me. I was doing the depression thing. Not just the holiday, just the depression thing. This is happening during summertime, but it really hit seriously during the, the holidays. Right. So I had to go ahead and start thinking, I need to dive into the Bible more. I need to get Jesus to where Jesus became my husband. And when that happens, literally it wasn't even a year after I seriously said, Lord, I guess I'm marrying you. Here we go. I will be... Yeah, you know, the best wife you've ever had. What do you need me to do? And voila. Literally almost 12 months to the day of making that commitment, Rob came into my life. And I can show you in my Bible where I wrote that down. You know, that uh, I wish I could think of the verse. It's talking about the Jesus, talk about the Lord being your husband. And it's just an amazing thing to realize, you know, yeah, the Lord brought me my physical husband and Rob, but I had to get myself ready for my physical husband. And by getting into the word every day and letting Jesus Christ into my heart every day, it was amazing to see the transformation in myself. I mean, I saw it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's why I, mean. I just want to say, hey, ladies. Dive into that by or gentlemen, and I'm sure it happens to guys too. Sure it does. You know, it just it hit me a little hard. You know, and since I'm the woman, I'll speak them from the woman's side. So the men are too thick-skinned to admit it. Oh yeah, my husband is a wonderful. Where did that come from? Wonderful big guy, muscles, guns, the whole thing, guns on the arms, you know. And he's like, okay, cool. I am Superman. Yes, yes. He's a big teddy bear. Seriously. Oh, don't let all my secrets out. I know. I just love you. So God found me the right man. So ladies, keep the faith. God will find you the right man. You two gentlemen, keep the faith. God will find you the right woman. 
you know, if we keep this up, Alan and Claudia are going to be jealous because they have a marriage show on later. That's in the true. Week. And uh, they're, they're going to be jealous because we're kind of like talking Something marriage action. stuff. Something action. What's it called, John? Actions couples take. Actions couple take. There Thursday you go. mornings. From noon to one. Noon to one. It's so, the nooner. It's, it's, a nooner. it's the nooner. So there you Woo-hoo. go. All right. So what were we talking about? <laughs> We're going to talk about Psalm 130 okay. in the Message Bible. Psalm 130 in the Did my message. Facebook go off? What happened? We're still on. Oh, okay. My phone went, my phone went phooey. Okay. Psalm 130 out of the Message Translation. Love the Message Translation. One of my, one of my favorite translations. Yes. Help, God. The bottom has fallen out of my life. Master, hear my cry for help. Listen hard. Open your ears. Listen to my cries for mercy. If you, God, kept records on wrongdoings, who would stand a chance? As it turns out, forgiveness is your habit, and that's why you're worshipped. I pray to God my life a prayer and wait for what he'll say and do. My life's on the line before God, my Lord, waiting and watching till morning, waiting and watching till morning. O oh, Israel, wait and watch for God. With God's arrival comes love. With God's arrival comes generous redemption. No doubt about it, he'll redeem Israel. Buy back Israel from captivity to sin. I like this part where it says, I pray to God my life a prayer. Just, you know, and then it's going to be, and then wait to see what he will do or say and do. That, that right there is, that'll preach. Mm-hmm. Anyway, and you pray something, and then you go ahead and you have a little waiting time, and then you got to see what he's going to do. Mm-hmm. Voila, that's the plan. And, pl- and prayers might be answered instantly or 20 minutes, the hour, or it might take a week or a month. Or a little bit longer, whatever time the Lord has before it's going to manifest. Right. But that's a great, that's a great sentence right there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it is. There's a lot of there's a lot of goodness in that one. Mm-hmm. All righty. He said just all sorts. Says, "Help, God." That that's pretty. Yeah. Just right there, being blunt. The, the bottom has fallen out of my life. That's probably pretty much what it feels like when you're in depression. I would imagine. I, mm-hmm. I've never been there, so. Uh, that, I, that I know of. But, so I can imagine that's what it feels like. Yeah, that's what it feels like. And master, hear my cry for help. You almost feel like, yeah, is anybody listening? Yeah, you know? and that's one of the great things here that Sean was saying, the number one thing they do is listen. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and, and the other thing in here, as it turns out, forgiveness is your habit. And yep. that's why you're worshipped. Mm-hmm. What a great thing. Forgiveness is something that God continually does. Continually forgives us for what we've done. Yep. In the good, bad, and the ugly. Yeah. And so no matter what you've done that maybe that's gotten you into depression, mm-hmm. it, it, it's redeemable. Cry out to God. Yeah, God's Pray to for God. you. Pray to God uh, your life a prayer mm-hmm. and wait for what he'll say and do. Mm-hmm. What, a, what a powerful tool to get out of. If you get nothing else out of today, write that one down, folks. Absolutely. That's in Psalm 130. Out of the Message Bible. Mm -hmm. You may not get King James saying it that way. And for those of you that say, I don't have a Message Bible, uh, it's on Bible Gateway. BibleGateway.com. Great resource with all the different uh, versions on it. Moving along. Isaiah 61, 1 through 4. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, This is out of the New King James. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to those who are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to console those who mourn in Zion, to give them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, 
that they may be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified, and they shall rebuild the old ruins, they shall raise up the former desolations, and they shall repair the ruined cities, the desolations of many generations. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I like that. Yeah, I like a bunch of this stuff. I always like it because it says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. And whenever you look at it, and I mean, shoot, get your bottle of anointing oil out or your little, the little one with the uh, rolly ball in it and just start rubbing it all over you going, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. I can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens me. That's Philippians 4. And just go ahead and say, hey, you know, God here, he also says in Isaiah 61, verse 4, they shall rebuild the old ruins. Now, take that for a second into they shall rebuild me, Jody White Judkins, from the old ruins. The old ruins being the depression. And I'm going to be rebuilt. I'm going to get a new spirit. I'm going to get a happy, joyful spirit. Joy comes in the morning. You know, that, that means morning, like a.m., not in right. the morning of grief. Right. And, it's, you know, and I believe you have another verse here which talks about, uh, hang on, beauty for ashes. We'll get to that one. We just read it. It's in I'm sorry, verse. but I missed it. Yeah. Yep, it is. It's in uh, verse 3. Verse 3, you're right. I do see it. And you just kind of want to go, wow. You know, when you look at it, you're just like, you know what? There is joy in the morning a.m. and there is joy in the morning grief. Mm -hmm. So we got to you know, make sure you, which, which morning we're doing here. Hopefully it's joy in the a.m. morning. But yes, God has... Know. God has beauty for ashes. Many times I have given him a lot of ashes. A lot of things where I've had to say, Lord, it's all yours. This is your problem. I can't handle it. Take it, Lord, and make it right. Mm -hmm. and, and that would mean even if I had to go apologize to somebody or ask them to forgive me. That might be a hard part, but you got to do what you got to do. Because right. right. it's easier to, to ask for forgiveness. Agreed. You don't want to drink that poison of unforgiveness. Because all that's going to hurt is you personally. Ask that. I could write a book. Probably we, should. We won't go down that road. <laughs> Because then I have to go down the road with my next wife. And That's we, right. We don't want to go down that road. No, we don't. No. Anyhow, let's see what's next here. Jeremiah 15. Jeremiah, what you got? Jeremiah yeah. was a bullfrog. There Sorry. you go. That's... <laughs> <laughs> hey, if you're not having fun, we're doing it wrong. That's right. Jeremiah was a bullfrog. Okay. Jeremiah 15, verse 10 through 21, again in the contemporary English version. I wish I had never been born. Oh, I've, wow. Hang on. That's quite the statement. That's quite the statement. You know, when you're depressed, you do say that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It says, I wish I could borrow money, but everyone curses me just the same. Then the Lord replied. Oh, give it your best Lord voice. I promise to protect you. And when disaster comes, even your enemies will beg you for help. People of Judah, just as you can't break iron mixed with bronze, you can't defeat the enemies that will attack from the north. I will give them everything you own, because you have sinned everywhere in your country. My anger is a fire that cannot be put out, so I will make you slaves of your enemies in a foreign land. You can see how I suffer insult after insult all because of you lord don't be so patient with my don't be so patient with my enemies 
take revenge on them before they all powerful. I don't go to parties and have a good time. Instead, I keep to myself because you have filled me with your anger. I am badly injured and in constant pain. Are you going to disappoint me, Lord, like a stream that goes dry in the heat of summer? Then the Lord told me, Stop talking like a fool. If you turn back to me and speak my message, I will let you be my prophet once again. I hope the people of Judah will accept what you say, but you can ignore their threats because I am making you strong like a bronze wall. They are evil and violent, but when they attack, I will be there to rescue you. I, the Lord, have spoken. Wow. God is going to do this and you're not listening. The judgments are coming. And seriously, Jeremiah was like in his wit's end, you know, mm -hmm. doing this. And he was he was like, I wish I had never been born. All right, people, whenever you get in a depressed state, even beyond just the ho the holidays, you can, it, and it gets down so low that you wish you hadn't been born. You better be making a phone call over here to Hope Recovery or calling me or Rob. Some, you know, don't ever do that. <laughs> but I want to go ahead and say, it also says here in verse 19, Stop talking like a fool, the Lord is saying. So number one, the Lord's saying, for you yeah and the lord is saying in verse 21 i will be there to rescue you and it does say i the lord have spoken yeah i mean the lord's going to rescue you hello does it get any better than that it does because you know back up in verse 16 he says because um i belong to you meaning you belong to the lord the Lord All-Powerful. Mm -hmm. This is this is where all the power is. This is the one that has control over everything. Mm -hmm. And he's going to be there to rescue you. Yep. That's 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 incredible. That's great. That's, that's beyond words. Yeah. Yeah. He promises yeah. to protect you. Mm -hmm. You call upon the Lord in, in your time of... of of uh, a depressed state and he comes to you and he rescues you and if you do this the right way you do this properly then it's going to get to the point where even your enemies are going to be going hey wait a minute what what's going on here what's he got yeah it even says in verse 11 uh, the lord is replying to uh, jeremiah i promise to protect you and when disaster comes even when your enemies will beg you for help. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, when your enemy, like you just said, when your enemies are saying, what's going on here? How come you've got this great favor? The Lord's protecting you. What about me? Yeah, yeah, exactly. What a test. Speaking about you, you can go ahead and say, "Hey, what do you got that I that I don't? I want it." Mm -hmm. And moving on, this is some things we can expect here. Lamentations three, fifty-five through fifty-seven. Again, looking at the message, mm -hmm. uh, it says, "I called out your name, O God, called from the bottom of the pit. You listened when I called out. Don't shut your ears. Get me out of here." Save me. You came close when I called out. You said, it's going to be all right. Yep. I love the part where it says that um, it's going to be all right. Mm -hmm. Don't worry. God's got it handled. Mm -hmm. 
let him do it. Yeah. All right. We're coming down to. Um, do John. You got to do John three. This is this is I think the one that you know captures it all and yep. and, and so many. So much of the gospel goes back to these couple of verses right here. John 3, uh, John chapter 3, verse 14 through 17 in the New King James Version. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Mm -hmm. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that through... Mm -hmm. Right there, is, is that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son for us, so that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. And I'm here to tell you, God's not here to say... You're going to have everlasting life of grief. Mm -hmm. You're not going to have an everlasting life of depression, right. of anxiety, of worry, of any of those things. That That's not the intent. That's not the intent. Mm -hmm. So we need to take all of this information and all this knowledge, and, and we need to put it together, and we need to be prayed up, and we need to, as we said earlier, put on our armor, and we need to do all these things to overcome this depression, this spiritual ba uh, battle, this mm -hmm. spiritual warfare. And treat it as such, mm -hmm. and treat it as such, so that we can get out from under uh, the attack that is, is taking place against us. Yep. And then just a homework assignment for everybody: you got for, and it's about do not worry. So yeah. you got to go ahead and read it and go look at it, and we'll ask for te we'll ask to have a test next week. Yeah. If you get a chance, go back and read Ephesians 3, 14 through 21. We're just about out of time here. But um, just wanted to say hi to a couple other people that have jumped in uh, since the start of the show. Julie's out there and Dellen and Elaine. and uh, got two Julies. Two Julies on there, yep. And uh, uh, anyhow, uh, just wanted to say hi to a couple of folks there. And, um, you know, we, we thoroughly enjoy you, you folks uh, chiming in, uh, throwing comments at us and uh, – Letting us know that you're there. So uh, we do, do, do that. blesses that. us, guys. Keep it up. It does. So we want to let you know about a great event coming up for Hope Recovery Center and Hope Radio. Uh, it is the Quarter Mania, December 8th at Corona Friends Church here in Corona. Uh, you can find more information at hoperecoverycenterinc.org. Basically, this is a, a, a night of fellowship and a night of uh, uh, auction items and, and uh, food that night. And... Uh, the, uh, the proceeds from that evening go to support the programs here at Hope Recovery Center. And uh, I know that uh, they always have a good time doing that. Lots of great prizes. Lots of great uh, fellowship. I mean, I don't know what it costs for an outpatient recovery center, but I do know what it costs for an inpatient. And that's about $30,000, not even for a year, not even for six months. That's for treatment. Yeah. So however long your treatment plan is. That's, you know, it's about $30,000. So I know what Sean does over here at Hope Recovery is priceless whenever you need something. Right. So any way we can support and help out, we got to do it. Got to step up. Absolutely. And again, I want to remind you, you know, Jody and I are not professional depression counselors nope. or anything like that. So um, we're, we don't claim to have all the answers there. And we want to remind you that if you do need help uh, to reach out to Hope Recovery Center, and uh, if you're not in the, in the uh, Southern California area where you can physically get to them, reach out to your pastor. Reach out to another recovery center. Reach out to your, do your doctor. Your doctor. The important thing is if you find yourself in a depressed state, uh, get help. Get help. Uh, we want yeah. to really emphasize that tonight. Get help and know that Jesus loves you. Yes, indeed. So check us out on Facebook at Day by Day with Robin Jody and leave us some feedback. Or you can check our website at www.tcbforjc.org. And if you'd like notes from a show, email us at info at tcb4jc.org. Indicate the topic of the show, and we'll be happy to send those uh, notes of the show along to you. If you'd like to support this ministry financially, please send your tax-deductible donation to Rob Judkins Ministries, P.O. Box 1415, Corona, California, 92878. And in closing, we'd like to give you a blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. 
May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Until next week, we want to wish you all a very happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Hope you have a great time with family. If you missed our show last week, go back in the podcast and catch our show on what is Thanksgiving uh, that we did last week. Uh, Until then, I'm Rob. And I'm Jody. And join us next week as we continue to help you find hope in Jesus Christ on Day by Day with Rob and Jody.